Greetings, this is Vodril and welcome back to Let's Play Bohemian Killing. Let us resume. We have 15 minutes, a bit less. My journal, in which I described the construction process of my interrogation machine, was on my desk. In certain parts of the game, the screen becomes black and white. It happens when a judge standing somewhere near you wants to ask you a question. You unlock new defense evidence. Okay, you leave the area. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence marked with number three. It clearly shows that my client had only his best intentions during the construction of his interrogation device. According to his plan, it would be forwarded to the prosecutor's office already. and law enforcement agencies in order to improve the effectiveness of interrogation. My client also wrote that the first test of the machine would be conducted under the supervision of the Ministère de la Justice. Thank you, Councillor. The accused may return to his testimony. We are missing defense number one. As far as evidence goes. My interrogation device is finally ready. I should soon begin the testing. But on whom? I won't find any volunteers and no innocent man should know the horror of my machine. I wrote to the Minister de la Justice offering them my device to check its effectiveness. Still no response from the ministry. Okay. So we are not some crazy psycho. It's good to know, I guess. This takes 15 minutes, which we don't have. I think it's time to start going downstairs. I turned down my prototype machine to interrogate prisoners. Then. I turned off my prototype machine to interrogate prisoners. Okay. I opened the hidden door behind my bookcase, leading to my second workshop. I wonder what evidence I'm missing. Well, of course it could be anywhere, so who knows. I opened the inner door. Maybe it's in my car. Again, this is a non-linear game, so it could be anywhere. Then I used the stairs. Let's start going towards the hotel. I opened the door and walked out into the stairwell. I'll take the stairs down, I guess. I decided to use the stairs instead of the elevator. Then I opened the door. I noticed that I noticed some muck on the floor of the corridor, and I silently cursed the rabble with which I have to share my building. Do you usually have a similar attitude to other people? Do you believe you are better than others? If others treat me like trash just because of my gypsy origin, I do not intend to remain silent. Do you often meet with racist-based reluctance toward you? Too often. Especially since I've become famous. In the eyes of all these fallen lords, I'm a nouveau riche. The poor think I'm a gypsy fraud and a thief. Did you feel hatred towards those people? I did. However, I certainly wouldn't kill anyone. They were not worth it. Please return to your testimony. You noticed some garbage. And what happened next? The same thing? Once again, I checked my mailbox. Okay. But there was nothing more there. Maybe that's a hint to check the mailbox because it's right below it. Okay, it's time to go to the hotel. Then and this is the, the door and 
assistance yeah. from our lawyer, I think. That the important event is uh, coming and you, you should go there. Remember that in order to arrange a credible line of defense, you will have to take time lapse into account. Press T to access the watch. And match your actions with the evidence. Press Tab. And the string of events according to the prosecution. Press Q. So, we need to be hiring towards the thing. Eh, let's not. I guess we'll go with the hotel, it's right here anyway. So. I'm guessing we don't have to spend time looking at the clock waiting until it goes exactly 25. Hopefully. We still have 10 minutes though. Ah, I can't see what the hell the watch is. I opened the door to the phone room. Uh, 10 minutes is too much. 5 maybe. I looked through an advertisement of a company offering blimp tours over Paris. That mechanic is kinda... I mean 10 minutes should be okay, but... Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I tried to open the door to the restaurant, but it was closed because of the late hour. I'm basically too early. It says 25. Exactly. So I'm not sure how we pass the time. Just wait around. Time does pass, but slowly, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm missing one here. Hmm. Nothing new here. Nothing new here either. I checked if my vending machine works fine. It was a great invention, by the way. What are these? I don't know. Why are all the other clocks not working? I looked at posters promoting Paris. That's rather strange that only ours is working. I looked at posters promoting Paris. So don't see any mechanic for me to wait. I threw a coin into the fountain of the hotel lobby. Why? As a room. This clock is annoying me. I should have uh, done the whole uh, telephone thing, but now it's too late. And we're five minutes early. So I will go around until uh, time passes a bit. Again, I don't know if it matters or not. I just want to be... I looked at the poster of the play. I may be overthinking this. Sponsored by Le Feu Company. It was the exact premiere where I had spent the evening. The game is not meant to be won. It's meant to be played through making your own narrative, basically. So you can replay it and see different outcomes, etc. Come on, time, pass faster. You know what? Uh, let me cut this out and I'll pick you up uh, when time has passed. And the back. Alright, that's good enough, I guess. Hopefully. Hopefully, it doesn't have to be on the dot. I wanted to rent a room in a hotel, but the clerk said 
that a room had already been rented in my name. He said it's on the top floor and gave me a spare key. Monsieur Eaton, do you claim that you did not rent that room? Oui, Monsieur le Président, but I knew it could not be a coincidence. The name Ethan is not that common. So you tried to learn more from the clerk? Yes, however, he hid behind his professional secrecy. I knew he wouldn't tell me a thing. I do not understand one more thing. You That's a good question. The hotel. So why did you want to rent a room there? Sometimes I meet up with some girls of the Moulin Rouge, and due to my reputation, I prefer not to do it in my apartment. Did you meet Marie Capet face to face? No, Monsieur le Président, never. I understand. Please continue. All right, the next one is... Oh, we need to sign the guest book. Actually, no, we don't need to sign the guest book. Because someone else have done it, probably. We have 30 minutes, so... I wanted to check the guest book, but I couldn't do that with the clerk nearby. Hmm. I have to find a way to draw him away, maybe. Then I called the elevator. Then this is here. I the elevator grate. Then I took the elevator to the second floor. I don't know where I'm going, so... Then I opened the door. Uh, oh, this is where we killed here, I remember. I tried the door handle to the hotel room, but it was closed. Why did you want to open that door? I I'm ashamed to admit, but I, I forgot which room I had rented. I understand. Please continue your testimony. That was okay, my bad. I opened the door and entered. We saw that in the vision at the start, so I should have remembered that. So some paint, two bottles. A newspaper. Are we not curious who rented this room for us? Cultural announcements. I wanted to learn something about that hotel room, allegedly rented by me. I dialed the front desk and asked a staff member to check something in the backyard. I had a moment to look in. I went out into the corridor. All right, let's get down there fast. Well, fast, I guess. As fast as I can go. I opened the elevator grate. I took the elevator to the ground floor. Listen, the thing is not very fast. <laughs> I opened the elevator grate. I checked the guest book. There was my surname, and a signature which I recognized immediately. It was the signature of my father. What? Defense evidence number one. Monsieur le Président, the evidence mentioned by my client has already been presented by the prosecutor. But I must add that we commissioned the handwriting expert. This is the proof marked with number one. It states that the signature appearing in the hotel guest book really belongs to Antoine Eaton, father of the accused. Then Monsieur Antoine Eaton will be re-examined as a witness. The hearing will take place at the next trial. I ask to duly summon the witness. The accused can return to his testimony. 
Graphology Expertise. Uh, after a careful examination of handwriting of Alfred Ethan and Antoine Ethan, it clearly states that the signature which appears on the guest book of the hotel belongs to Antoine Ethan. Okay. And we can't do anything else here, so. It's 20 minutes. And we need to be... Hey, we have 25 minutes. I opened the door and walked out into the street. Then I opened the gate. For a moment, I admired the charms of Montmartre. So weird. Later, I wanted to start the car and go for a ride, but it ran out of fuel. From l'Opéra Garnier, I already returned on fumes. Can we change uh, that? Can we get some fuel? I don't think so. You can't go oh, that way or I this way. The charms of I do not recall that. Okay, fine. So. Next event is happening at 30 minutes. Uh, so go in there. I read the restaurant's menu. I guess so. What the? Oh yeah, I remember. I entered the Café de Paris Cafeteria. I wanted to drink some good wine and eat a piece of cheese. A group of Parisian rabble tried to throw me out, screaming that there was no room for gypsy thieves. They beat me and threw me into the street. I was all covered in blood. Did you report this fact to police officers? No, Monsieur le Président. I decided that it was not worth losing my time. And why is that? A second of my worth is more important than the lifetime of each and every one of this gay. Civilians. Besides, if I had reported it, I would have done them a favor. What do you mean, Monsieur Eaton? In jail, they would have had better living conditions than those holes that they call houses. I understand. Seriously, this gay. To your testimony. I mean, we grew up. And the country hates him, basically, because he's a gypsy, but wow. Damn. I opened the door and entered my building. What time is it? Ah, we have time. Then I opened the door. Then I called the elevator. I keep doing while it's over. Actually... It's not over here. Okay. Then I closed the inner door. That makes sense. It was above when we took the stairs. I opened the elevator grate. Then I took the elevator to the second floor. Which means the world might have some persistence. I guess we need to find the, the sour and change clothes too. Uh, which I'm not sure where it is. Oh, here. Yes. We have 15 minutes? Yes, we do. I took a bath, washing away any traces of blood. The accused entered the apartment in the home in the company of Marie Capé or let her in. Uh, okay.
So I'm guessing it's Marie Capé. I heard someone knocking at the door. I opened it and there she was, Marie Capé. I invited Marie Capé inside. She said she remembered me from school and was curious how things turned out for me. What's wrong with your right hand? I've been recently hired as a maid by my neighbor, Monsieur Brissot. I showed her my apartment, my designs and inventions. She was delighted. So I thought maybe she would be interested in my interrogation machine. I took her to my private workshop. Uh, I think she's missing her right hand. Then I turned down my prototype machine to integrate prisoners. Then I felt a blow to my head and I collapsed on the floor. So she's right handed but she's missing her right hand. I think that was a prosthetic. I woke up some time later. My head ached and I was all covered in blood. Marie Capé was nowhere to be found. So that's why she used the I saw left a hand. Rod on the ground, and there was blood on it. But why? My blood. Why did she do that? Ooh. I saw that the safe was open. And Capé had stolen the designs of my most important invention. Why do you think Madame Capé did it? That I don't bits. know, Monsieur President, but I was going to find out. I picked up the mechanical dagger lying on the desk. I think the time to read the book has probably passed. Where is the next one? 45... But we're not there, right? It's in the event chain, so we might need to go there, though. Have some time. It wouldn't make any sense to read the book right now, narrative-wise, so... I saw a metal rod on the ground. Yeah, yeah. There was blood on it. My blood. I changed into clean clothes. I opened the inner door. So do we know that she works uh, the stairs. at the same building? Man, I would be creeped out with these things. For a moment, I admired the new sculptures that I had recently ordered. I opened the door and walked out into the stairwell. I decided to use the stairs instead of the elevator. I knocked at Monsieur Brissot's door and he called back after some time. Do you always visit your neighbors at such odd hours? Monsieur Brissot is the only neighbor I like. I believe with reciprocity. He goes to sleep late and sometimes we like to argue about politics and the influence of La Révolution on today's France. Please, return So if we know him, we should know that she works there, right? Or am I mistaking the names? I should uh, check the evidence. There were no other injuries or traces of violence. Hmm. And her hands seem okay there. But I'm not sure that's supposed to be a... I don't know. I, I think she was missing her hand, but I can't tell.
I think I'm I think it's the supporting maybe Monsieur Brissot. I think it's the same place, right? Brissot. Anyway, we'll see I guess. I opened the door to the living room. was a letter tucked into Monsieur Brissot's book. The Lordship Service Association was the sender. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence marked with number 10. It is a letter sent by a fictitious organization to Monsieur Brissot, which, as it was said in the letter, cultivated traditions of the French nobility, and was sending Madame Capé a servant for free. The letter mm. was sent several days before the murder. So she went there just to get our stuff, I guess. Who had really sent Marie Capé to Monsieur Brissot? And what were their intentions? Uh, thank you for the clarification. The accused may continue to testify. That's interesting. The plot thickens. I'm not sure why we opened his letter like that and he didn't mind, but... I started asking Monsieur Brissot about the breaking into my apartment and about the thief, whether he knew who she was or whether he had heard something suspicious. He said that he knew nothing, but realized from the description of the woman that it could be his new maid who had left his apartment some time ago. It was likely that it was the same person, so he let me in into her room, thinking that maybe I would find some sort of clue explaining her outrageous behavior. Mm, nice. Uh, stop going onto the chairs. So where is her room? I opened the door to go oh. in Marie Capé's room. There were clippings about me hanging on the wall. They described my access to money, my inventions, and my achievements. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence marked with number seven. One can conclude that the victim is obviously obsessed with my client. Thank you for your clarifications, Mr. Eaton. Please continue. I like the voice acting so far. I'm not sure how original some of these uh, accents are, but uh, they have done a really good job with that. I examined Marie Cate's read, and it was a socialist scribble. Of because a communist. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence mark with number six. It shows Madame Capé's socialist views, which could have intensified aversion towards my client. Thank you for your clarification, Monsieur Eaton. Please return to your testimony. I, I opened the cabinet. I found a letter in her bedside table addressed to Marie Capé. Someone had ordered her to obtain secret designs of my new invention. Her employer knew about the secret passage in my apartment, and he knew the combination of the safe. Oh. She was supposed to act on the day of the Promete Première funded by us, and which I attended. After gaining the designs, Madame Capé was supposed to meet her employer in the apartment on the top floor. What's the father? Hotel. Maybe. The letter was not signed. Why would the father do that? What? Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence marked with number eight. It clearly indicates the intention of committing the crime by the victim, which, according to my client's testimony, Madame Capé committed on the day of her death. 
Not only did she break into the apartment of my client, deprived him of his extremely important documents, but also she was acting with the intention to kill him by hitting him on the head with a heavy object, which resulted in loss of consciousness and brain damage. Then she fled the scene without calling for medical help or making sure that my client was alive. So your client had sufficient motive to commit that murder. Gentlemen, please calm down. The evaluation of the evidence is in the hands of the court. Maybe we are not guilty. Please continue. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But not in this episode. For now, thank you for watching. As usually, feel free to leave a comment if you want to. Subscribe, like all the good stuff. And I also like to say again a uh, big thanks to the developer and publisher for providing me with this key. Because I'm really, really enjoying the game so far. See you next time with more Bohemian Killing.